Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Warren here, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Panasonic Lumix S1H here with the pre-production firmware. This firmware, the most exciting thing is that the S1H can now output raw video footage through HDMI to uh, Atomo Ninja 5 external recorder. Now, of course, you need to have a S1H and you need to have the Atomo Ninja 5 and both need to update to the latest firmware. The Ninja 5, I actually don't know what's the version number, I just got given a pre-production firmware but basically that one you just need to copy it to the SSD and then plug it in and then um, when you start the Ninja 5 it will automatically detect and then you update the firmware so it's all very easy and quick as well and then you would need, um, I would definitely recommend a bigger SSD hard drive so if you only have a half terabyte one, maybe consider getting a bigger one, a one terabyte one would be good. Uh, we'll talk about the file size a little bit later on. And then one very important thing that you may not be really aware is that you need to have a good HDMI cable. Because when I first got the firmware and then I enabled the raw output on the camera, and I see nothing on the Ninja 5 and I was like, okay, what's wrong? Did I do some settings wrong? Turns out it's the HDMI cable that I have doesn't support the high bandwidth signal that's sent from the camera. So I tried all the HDMI cable I had at home. None of them work. And then I went to a shop and bought an HDMI 2.0 cable, which um, it say it support up to 18 gigabit per second GBPS. And I tried that and it, worse kind of but it will cut out every three or four seconds so basically it's unusable so i end up have to buy another hdmi 2 cable which also claimed to support the uh, 18 gbps data rate and that one fortunately that one works and that's the one i have now here connected so yeah make sure you have a high speed and good quality hdmi cable there are three different video resolution that is supported if you want to output raw footage to the Ninja 5. The first one, the highest resolution one is the 5.9K 16 to 9 video and that is up to 30 frames per second. With this resolution, it's basically using the full sensor output from the camera, but of course it is in 16 to 9, so not exactly the full full frame. And then the next option is the 4K, or some people may call it Cinema 4K, but it's not exactly a Cinema 4K resolution, or some may call it 4.1K resolution, but it's a 4K resolution at 17 to 9 aspect ratio and that is up to 60 frames per second with this resolution because raw output pretty much means 
whatever is captured by the sensor is sent to the external recorder. So that means it's a one-to-one -one ratio that is captured by the camera sensor to output. And that means when you are capturing 4K in RAW format, it is only using a center portion of the sensor instead of the full sensor. So that is approximately a 1.5 time crop factor when you are recording in the 4K resolution. This is a bit different to previously when you're recording in 8-bit or 10-bit because when you're recording 4K using the 10-bit or 8-bit, you can still use the full sensor output and then with down sample to 4K resolution, but this is not the case when you are doing raw output. And the last option is to capture anamorphic video at 3.5K resolution and the frame rate can be up to 50 frames per second. When you are capturing video in this resolution, the crop factor is approximately 1.65. Okay, before we go ahead and look at the raw video that is captured by the S1H, there are two more things that I want to talk about first. The first one is the file size. Just to give you a base figure for comparison, if you are shooting 4K video at 25 frames per second at 8 bit, one minute of footage is around just over 700 megabytes. And now if you shoot the 4K 25 frames per second footage uh, in ProRes raw output and 1 minute footage is now approximately 6 GB. And that means if you have a 1 TB SSD drive on your Ninja 5, you will be able to capture around 2.5 hours of the 4K raw output video. And if you want to capture at the maximum resolution 5.9K raw video, again at 25 frames per second, now one minute of footage would now be 13 gigabyte. And that means if you have a one terabyte SSD drive on your Ninja 5, you will only be able to capture around 80 minutes footage at 5.9K raw video output. So because of that, I think if you are planning to shoot a lot of 5.9K raw video, I would definitely recommend you at least get a 1TB SSD drive for your Ninja 5. In terms of editing those ProRes RAW files, there are already quite a few different video editing software that will support it. For example, if you are a Mac user, you can definitely use the Final Cut Pro. And for me, I'm using the Adobe Premiere Pro because Adobe just released the latest update for their Premiere Pro, which support the ProRes RAW output. Now, I am normally just using my MacBook Pro. It's a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch one. Uh, for editing, so I was a bit worried about uh, whether it is good enough to uh, fast enough to edit those raw footage, especially the 5.9k raw file. Would it struggle a lot? But it turns out it is not really a problem. Editing those raw file is very similar to edit the normal 4k footage, even the 5.9k. Raw file, my 2018 MacBook Pro can handle it pretty okay. Um, not perfect, but it's usable. I don't even have to create a low resolution proxy to improve the performance. So, if your current computer can handle 4K file okay, you should be able to edit this ProRes Raw file even in the 5.9K format. Okay, now let's have a look at the video image quality. And first, let me just show you a 8-bit video that is captured using the S1H at ISO 640. And look at this footage. I kind of intentionally underexposed this video a little bit by around two stops or so because what I want to do next is I want to push the exposure up and just try to see if I can reveal some more um, details in the shadow. And this is what I got if I try to push the exposure up and also push some shadow with this 8-bit video file. And you can see that it does reveal a little bit more of the shadow details. But because it is only a 8-bit file, so there is only so much it can reveal. Look at the more deeper, darker shadow area. Nothing much has been changed when I try to push the exposure or the shadow up. And now let's have a look at the ProRes RAW output. This is the ProRes RAW file capture using exactly the same exposure setting, so also at ISO 640. You can probably see that even with this unedited video, there is already quite a bit more shadow detail that is captured in this RAW file.
And now I try to push the exposure and also the shadows up a bit and let's see what we got. First thing I actually noticed is that there's a lot more noise compared to the previous 8-bit footage after I tried to push the shadow and exposure. But I will talk about noise a little bit later in this video. And now if you look at the shadow area with the raw file, definitely there is a lot more shadow detail now revealed after I tried to push the exposure up. Look at the camera on my desk. The shadow area there is definitely more details and also look at the the wooden shelf in the background with the 8-bit file even if i try to push it it still remain black but now with the prores raw video i see a lot more shadow details now after i try to push the exposure up during post processing okay now the prores raw output definitely looks pretty good but what about compare it with the 10-bit vlog footage that you can previously already capture using the s1h and now okay let's look at it side by side comparison so similar kind of adjustment is applied to both footage and first thing you may notice is um, the dynamic range seems to be pretty much exactly the same and that is exactly as expected with the raw output it does not actually extend the dynamic range it remains exactly the same as if you compare it with the 10-bit vlog output. So this is one misconception that a lot of people may have. They thought the raw output would give you more dynamic range when you compare to the previous 10-bit output. That is not the case. And the second thing you may notice is that the 10-bit output actually has a lot less noise compared to the raw output. It seems to be very similar to what we saw before the 8-bit output when we push it, it has less noise than the raw output. So this is the same for the 10-bit. And the reason is because all the 8-bit or 10-bit output, they are all being processed by the camera. So quite a few steps have already been applied because the video is saved to the file. For example, we have the chroma subsampling, we have the noise reduction, and that's why the output footage that you see from the 10-bit or the 8-bit output looks cleaner than the raw output which has no noise reduction applied it. And let's have a look at another comparison footage. Both files capture using exactly the same exposure settings. So set the ISO to 12,800, pretty high ISO. So the top half is the 10-bit output while the bottom half is the raw output. And once again, you can see that the 10-bit output has less noise than the raw output. But now, if we zoom into the image and look at it a bit closer, and you will notice that the 10-bit output actually looks quite a bit softer compared to the raw output. And that is also because of the noise reduction. When you apply noise reduction, then you would be giving up a bit of the finer, small details and also the sharpness. And because the raw output has no noise reduction applied, so it can retain all the sharpness and fine details. But of course, the output footage is more noisy. And what that means is if you are shooting raw video, you should be doing the noise reduction yourself. And the advantage is that if you're using your computer to do the noise reduction, the result should be quite a bit better than what you got from the in-camera noise reduction. And also you can choose um, how much noise reduction, how strong the noise reduction you want to apply um, without having to rely on the setting that is already built into the camera. So you definitely have more flexibility when you want to um, do the noise reduction yourself in post processing. And unless you are doing something completely wrong, the result should also be quite a bit better as well. But this is not the only advantage you have when you're shooting raw video. Now let's look at another example. So look at my desk and um, this area, zoom into this area. Look at the highlight. The highlight is um, quite well exposed. It's not creeping, it's not overexposed at all. And now if I apply some really crazy uh, curve to it and I just try to increase the contrast of the um, the desk area especially those highlight area and this is what i got if i try to do that with the 10 bit output with my crazy curve adjustment pretty much everything is either black or white there is not much transition between um, the black area and white area 
And now if you look at the result I got from the ProRes raw output, if I apply the similar kind of curve to it, and this is what I got. And you can see there is quite a bit more details between the black and the white area. For example, if you look at the bottom right area of my desk, you can see the ProRes raw output, there is a lot more details that I managed to retain with my crazy curve applied. And when you look at the 10-bit output, there's pretty much nothing between the black and white. And the reason is because with the raw file, it's a 12-bit output. Compared it with the 10-bit output, there is a lot more information captured. So when you try to do some crazy processing, then you can see the difference. So that is definitely pretty impressive because even with the 10-bit output, it already gives you a lot of flexibility when you want to do some more extreme editing. But in comparison, the 12-bit output definitely gives you another step or another two step more in terms of flexibility. And another thing I noticed when I was comparing the 10-bit output and the raw output is the raw output doesn't have any of the lens profile correction applied, for example, the distortion. Um, you can easily see when you're flicking between these two, you notice that the raw output doesn't have the correction applied, while the 10-bit or even the 8-bit output would already have those profile correction applied. When you are recording in the raw output, the camera um, cannot use the auto white balance so you have to set the white balance yourself so i also had a bit of play because for me as a photographer one of the reasons why i want to shoot in the raw format is because i can um don't worry about the white balance so much i can just shoot in whatever the auto white balance is and then i can just try to fix it in post processing especially when i'm shooting weddings or shooting events a lot of time um, i have to go through different area that has completely different kind of lighting and most of the time i just don't have time to just slow down and check and get the white balance i just have to rely on the camera which get it right most of the time but sometimes it doesn't get right but with raw file doesn't matter i can just adjust it and fix it in post processing um, so I tried to see if I can do the same thing with the ProRes raw output. So um, I shot a footage first. I set it to the lowest car temperature that I can set on the S1H, which is 2500 Kelvin. And then this is the footage I got. And then I shot another footage and I set it to the extreme opposite end, which is the 10,000 K, which is the highest warmest white balance that I can set on the S1H. So these are two side-by-side -side footage that I shot at the different white balance setting and i try to then um, adjust one of the clip and see if i can make it to match the other one just like what i should be able to do if this is a raw photo file but um no matter what i do i actually cannot get the two file to match in terms of color so uh it seems like the raw video at least the ProRes raw video with the current firmware and the software etc you don't have the same kind of flexibility when you try to play with the different white balance but my example is a very extreme example normally we wouldn't be trying to um, shoot at 2500k when the car temperature is actually 10,000k your um, white balance you should be able to set it relatively close to what do you, you actually want and when I try to do that so if my white balance is only like 1000k or so different to the actual value I want then um, when I adjust it it seems to look quite good so yeah it's not a problem for probably most user but that's something that you keep in mind you cannot just randomly set some white balance you should set it to as close as possible even when you are shooting in the ProRes raw output Okay, so the ProRes RAW output for the Panasonic S1H is finally here. Is it good? Definitely yes. The 5.9K RAW output footage looks absolutely amazing. And also it gives you a lot more flexibility in post-processing, even when you compare to the 10-bit output. And what I also really like is editing those files on your computer during the post-processing you don't need the super super fast computer. Even my 2018 MacBook Pro can handle those 5.9K raw file pretty all right, just like the 4K, normal 4K footage that I'm editing normally. So that is definitely very good. 
So does that mean everyone should just go and shoot in the 5.9 or 4K raw video from now on? I think the answer is no. And why do I say that? I think it's just like, for example, if you need to go, okay, like if you need to go pick up some takeaway from somewhere just down the road, not too far away, if you have a Ferrari in your garage, are you going to drive your Ferrari to go and pick up some takeaway? Especially if there's no good parking there. So you definitely can do that, but it may be easier if you just grab a bicycle or like a uh, e-scooter and go there because it will probably get there faster and come back here faster. But if you take a Ferrari there, you have to be careful. You need to find a nice parking, make sure no other people try to steal your car, etc. So what I want to say is, while the ProRes raw output is good, but there are also a few different downsides as well. Uh, the size, file size is definitely a lot bigger. You need a big SSD drive. If you are planning to do some long shooting, you probably need a couple of different SSD drive as well. And then because it's a raw output, the camera does not apply any processing already. So that means you need to do the noise reduction yourself and also maybe the lens profile correction, etc. So that means your post processing time would be quite a bit higher than if you just shoot the 8-bit or the 10-bit footage directly from the camera. So I think unless you really need the ultimate, the best possible output format, the 10-bit output from the S1H is probably good enough and it can save you a lot of space, time and work as well. So I think you really just have to think about what is the best format that you should use for your job. But the best thing is this update is a free update for all the S1H owner. So you have the freedom, you have the choice to pick the best file format for you. And that is always a good news. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the ProRes raw output, feel free to ask me. Thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.